In telecommunications, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing OFDM is a method of encoding digital data on multiple carrier frequencies. OFDM has developed into a popular scheme for wideband digital communication, used in applications such as digital television and audio broadcasting, DSL Internet access, wireless networks, power line networks, and 4G mobile communications. Encoded orthogonal frequency division multiplexing COFDM, forward error correction convolutional coding and time-frequency interleaving are applied to the signal being transmitted. This is done to overcome errors in mobile communication channels affected by multipath propagation and Doppler effects. COFDM was introduced by Allard in 1986 for digital audio broadcasting for Eureka Project 147. In practice, OFDM has become used in combination with such coding and interleaving, so that the terms COFDM and OFDM co apply to common applications. OFDM is a frequency division multiplexing FDM scheme used as a digital multi carrier modulation method. OFDM was introduced by Chong of Bell Labs in 1966. Numerous closely spaced orthogonal sub-carrier signals with overlapping spectra are emitted to carry data. Demodulation is based on fast Fourier transform algorithms. OFDM was improved by Weinstein and Ebert in 1971 with the introduction of a guard interval, providing better orthogonality in transmission channels affected by multipath propagation. Each sub-carrier signal is modulated with a conventional modulation scheme such as quadrature amplitude modulation or phase shift keying at a low symbol rate. This maintains total data rates similar to conventional single-carrier modulation schemes in the same bandwidth. The main advantage of OFDM over single carrier schemes is its ability to cope with severe channel conditions for example, attenuation of high frequencies in a long copper wire, narrowband interference and frequency selective fading due to multipath without complex equalization filters. Channel equalization is simplified because OFDM may be viewed as using many slowly modulated narrowband signals rather than one rapidly modulated wideband signal. The low symbol rate makes the use of a guard interval between symbols affordable, making it possible to eliminate intersymbol interference and use echoes and time spreading in analog television visible as ghosting and blurring, respectively, to achieve a diversity gain, i.e. a signal-to-noise ratio improvement. This mechanism also facilitates the design of single frequency networks SFNs where several adjacent transmitters send the same signal simultaneously at the same frequency as the signals from multiple distant transmitters may be recombined constructively sparing interference of a traditional single carrier system. Topic: <laughs> Example of applications. The following list is a summary of existing OFDM-based standards and products. For further details, see the usage section at the end of the article. Topic: <laughs> Wired version, mostly known as discrete multi-tone transmission (DMT). ADSL and VDSL broadband access via POTS copper wiring. DVB-C2, an enhanced version of the DVB-C digital cable TV standard Powerline communication PLC. ITUTG.HN, a standard which provides high-speed local area networking of existing home wiring power lines, phone lines and coaxial cables Trailblazer telephone line modems Multimedia over coax alliance MOCA home networking DOCSIS 3. One broadband delivery Topic. Wireless The wireless LAN, WLAN, radio interfaces IEEE 802.11a, G, N, A, C, A and HIPERLAN, 2. 
the Digital Radio Systems DAB, Eureka 147, DAB Plus, Digital Radio Mondial, HD Radio, TDMB and ISDB TSB. The Terrestrial Digital TV Systems DVBT and ISDBT. The Terrestrial Mobile TV Systems DVBH, TDMB, ISDBT and MediaFlow Forward Link. The Wireless Personal Area Network PAN Ultra Wideband UWB IEEE 802.15 3A implementation suggested by Ymedia Alliance the OFDM based multiple access technology OFDMA is also used in several 4G and pre 4G cellular networks mobile broadband standards and the next generation WLAN the mobility mode of the wireless MAN, Broadband Wireless Access BWA, standard IEEE 802.16e, or mobile WiMAX. The mobile broadband wireless access MBWA, standard IEEE 802.20. The downlink of the 3GPP Long-Term Evolution LTE, fourth generation mobile broadband standard. The radio interface was formerly named High Speed OFDM Packet Access HSOPA, now named Evolved UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access EUTRA. WLAN IEEE 802.11ax Key features The advantages and disadvantages listed below are further discussed in the characteristics and principles of operation section below. Topic: Summary of advantages. High spectral efficiency as compared to other double sideband modulation schemes, spread spectrum, etc can easily adapt to severe channel conditions without complex time domain equalization. Robust against narrow band co-channel interference. Robust against intersymbol interference and fading caused by multipath propagation. Efficient implementation using fast Fourier transform. Low sensitivity to time synchronization errors. Tuned sub-channel receiver filters are not required, unlike conventional FDM. Facilitates single frequency networks, SFNs, i.e. transmitter macrodiversity. Topic: Summary of disadvantages. Sensitive to Doppler shift. Sensitive to frequency synchronization problems. High peak to average power ratio PAPR, requiring linear transmitter circuitry, which suffers from poor power efficiency. Loss of efficiency caused by cyclic prefix, guard interval. Topic. Characteristics and principles of operation Topic. Orthogonality Conceptually, OFDM is a specialized frequency division multiplexing FDM, method, with the additional constraint that all subcarrier signals within a communication channel are orthogonal to one another. In OFDM, the subcarrier frequencies are chosen so that the subcarriers are orthogonal to each other, meaning that crosstalk between the subchannels is eliminated and inter-carrier guard bands are not required. This greatly simplifies the design of both the transmitter and the receiver. Unlike conventional FDM, a separate filter for each subchannel is not required. The orthogonality requires that the subcarrier spacing is Delta F equals K T U display style script style delta F equals frac K T underscore U 
Hz, where 2 seconds is the useful symbol duration, the receiver side window size, and k is a positive integer, typically equal to 1. This stipulates that each carrier frequency undergoes k more complete cycles per symbol period than the previous carrier. Therefore, with n subcarriers, the total passband bandwidth will be b approximately equals n delta f h z. The orthogonality also allows high spectral efficiency, with a total symbol rate near the Nyquist rate for the equivalent baseband signal, i.e., near half the Nyquist rate for the double sideband physical passband signal. Almost the whole available frequency band can be used. OFDM generally has a nearly white spectrum, giving it benign electromagnetic interference properties with respect to other co channel users. A simple example, a useful symbol duration 2 equals 1 millisecond would require a sub-carrier spacing of delta f equals 1 1 m s equals 1 k h z Display style script style delta f equals frac 1 1 mathrm mis equals 1 mathrm khz or an integer multiple of that for orthogonality n topic 1000 subcarriers would result in a total passband bandwidth of n delta f 1 MHz. For this symbol time, the required bandwidth in theory according to Nyquist is B W equals R 2 equals N T U 2 equals 0 0.5 M H Z Display style script style mathrm b w equals r two equals n t underscore u two equals zero five mathrm m h z half of the achieved bandwidth required by our scheme, where r is the bit rate and where n. Topic one thousand samples per symbol by FFT. If a guard interval is applied, see below, Nyquist bandwidth requirement would be even lower. The FFT would result in n 1000 samples per symbol. If no guard interval was applied, this would result in a baseband complex valued signal with a sample rate of 1 MHz, which would require a baseband bandwidth of 0.5 MHz according to Nyquist. However, the passband RF signal is produced by multiplying the baseband signal with a carrier waveform i.e., double sideband quadrature amplitude modulation resulting in a passband bandwidth of 1 MHz. A single sideband SSB or vestigial sideband VSB modulation scheme would achieve almost half that bandwidth for the same symbol rate i.e., twice as high spectral efficiency for the same symbol alphabet length. It is however more sensitive to multipath interference. OFDM requires very accurate frequency synchronization between the receiver and the transmitter. With frequency deviation, the subcarriers will no longer be orthogonal, causing inter-carrier interference (ICI), i.e., crosstalk between the subcarriers. Frequency offsets are typically caused by mismatched transmitter and receiver oscillators or by Doppler shift due to movement. While Doppler shift alone may be compensated for by the receiver, the situation is worsened when combined with multipath, as reflections will appear at various frequency offsets, which is much harder to correct. This effect typically worsens as speed increases, and is an important factor limiting the use of OFDM in high-speed vehicles. In order to mitigate ICI in such scenarios, one can shape each subcarrier in order to minimize the interference resulting in a non-orthogonal subcarrier's overlapping. 
For example, a low complexity scheme referred to as WCPOFDM, weighted cyclic prefix orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, consists of using short filters at the transmitter output in order to perform a potentially non-rectangular pulse shaping and a near-perfect reconstruction using a single tap per subcarrier equalization. Other ICI suppression techniques usually increase drastically the receiver complexity. Topic. Implementation using the FFT algorithm The orthogonality allows for efficient modulator and demodulator implementation using the FFT algorithm on the receiver side, and inverse FFT on the sender side. Although the principles and some of the benefits have been known since the 1960s, OFDM is popular for wideband communications today by way of low-cost digital signal processing components that can efficiently calculate the FFT. The time to compute the inverse FFT or FFT transform has to take less than the time for each symbol, which for example for DVBT, FFT 8K, means the computation has to be done in 896 microseconds or less. For an 8192 point FFT this may be approximated to M I P S equals C O M P U T A T I O N A L C O M P L E X I T Y T S Y M B O L times one three times ten minus six equals one hundred forty seven thousand four hundred fifty six times two thousand eight hundred ninety six times ten minus six times one point three times ten minus six equals four hundred twenty eight display style begin aligned mathrm mips and equals frac mathrm computational complexity t underscore mathrm symbol times one point three times ten carat minus six and equals Equals FRAC 147 456 times 2 896 times 10 carat minus 6 times 1.3 times 10 carat minus 6 and equals 428 end aligned MIPS equals million instructions per second. The computational demand approximately scales linearly with FFT size, so a double size FFT needs double the amount of time and vice versa. As a comparison an Intel Pentium 3 CPU at 1.266 GHz is able to calculate a 8192-point FFT in 576 microseconds using FFTW. Intel Pentium M at 1.6 GHz does it in 387 microseconds. Intel Core Duo at 3.0 GHz does it in 96.8 microseconds. Topic. Guard interval for elimination of intersymbol interference One key principle of OFDM is that since low symbol rate modulation schemes i.e., where the symbols are relatively long compared to the channel time characteristics suffer less from intersymbol interference caused by multipath propagation, it is advantageous to transmit a number of low rate streams in parallel instead of a single high rate stream. Since the duration of each symbol is long, it is feasible to insert a guard interval between the OFDM symbols, thus eliminating the intersymbol interference. The guard interval also eliminates the need for a pulse shaping filter, and it reduces the sensitivity to time synchronization problems. 
A simple example, if one sends a million symbols per second using conventional single carrier modulation over a wireless channel, then the duration of each symbol would be one microsecond or less. This imposes severe constraints on synchronization and necessitates the removal of multipath interference. If the same million symbols per second are spread among 1,000 sub-channels, the duration of each symbol can be longer by a factor of a thousand i.e., one millisecond for orthogonality with approximately the same bandwidth. Assume that a guard interval of one-eighth of the symbol length is inserted between each symbol. Intersymbol interference can be avoided if the multipath time spreading, the time between the reception of the first and the last echo, is shorter than the guard interval i.e., 125 microseconds. This corresponds to a maximum difference of 37.5 km between the lengths of the paths. The cyclic prefix, which is transmitted during the guard interval, consists of the end of the OFDM symbol copied into the guard interval, and the guard interval is transmitted followed by the OFDM symbol. The reason that the guard interval consists of a copy of the end of the OFDM symbol is so that the receiver will integrate over an integer number of sinusoid cycles for each of the multipaths when it performs OFDM demodulation with the FFT. In some standards such as ultrawideband, in the interest of transmitted power, cyclic prefix is skipped and nothing is sent during the guard interval. The receiver will then have to mimic the cyclic prefix functionality by copying the end part of the OFDM symbol and adding it to the beginning portion. Topic. Simplified equalization The effects of frequency selective channel conditions, for example fading caused by multipath propagation, can be considered as constant flat over an OFDM subchannel if the subchannel is sufficiently narrow-banded i.e., if the number of subchannels is sufficiently large. This makes frequency domain equalization possible at the receiver, which is far simpler than the time domain equalization used in conventional single carrier modulation. In OFDM, the equalizer only has to multiply each detected subcarrier, each Fourier coefficient in each OFDM symbol by a constant complex number or a rarely changed value. On a fundamental level, simpler digital equalizers are better because they require less operations, which translate to less round-off errors in the equalizer. Those round-off errors can be viewed as numerical noise and are inevitable. Our example, the OFDM equalization in the above numerical example would require one complex valued multiplication per subcarrier and symbol i.e. n equals 1000 display style script style n equals 1000 complex multiplications per OFDM symbol i.e. 1 million multiplications per second at the receiver the FFT algorithm requires n log 2 n equals 10 000 display style script style n log underscore 2 n equals 10000 this is imprecise over half of these complex multiplications are trivial ie equals to 1 and are not implemented in software or hw complex valued multiplications per ofdm symbol ie 10 million multiplications per second at both the receiver and transmitter side this should be compared with the corresponding 1 million symbols per second single carrier modulation case mentioned in the example, where the equalization of 125 microseconds time spreading using a FIR filter would require, in a naive implementation, 125 multiplications per symbol i.e., 125 million multiplications per second. 
FFT techniques can be used to reduce the number of multiplications for an FER filter based time domain equalizer to a number comparable with OFDM, at the cost of delay between reception and decoding, which also becomes comparable with OFDM. If differential modulation such as DPSK or DQPSK is applied to each subcarrier, equalization can be completely omitted, since these non coherent schemes are insensitive to slowly changing amplitude and phase distortion. In a sense, improvements in FER equalization using FFTs or partial FFTs leads mathematically closer to OFDM, but the OFDM technique is easier to understand and implement, and the subchannels can be independently adapted in other ways than varying equalization coefficients, such as switching between different QAM constellation patterns and error correction schemes to match individual subchannel noise and interference characteristics. Some of the sub Carriers in some of the OFDM symbols may carry pilot signals for measurement of the channel conditions, i.e., the equalizer gain and phase shift for each subcarrier. Pilot signals and training symbols preambles may also be used for time synchronization to avoid intersymbol interference ICI, and frequency synchronization to avoid inter-carrier interference ICI, caused by Doppler shift. OFDM was initially used for wired and stationary wireless communications. However, with an increasing number of applications operating in highly mobile environments, the effect of dispersive fading caused by a combination of multi-path propagation and Doppler shift is more significant. Over the last decade, research has been done on how to equalize OFDM transmission over doubly selective channels. Topic. Channel coding and interleaving OFDM is invariably used in conjunction with channel coding forward error correction, and almost always uses frequency and or time interleaving. Frequency subcarrier interleaving increases resistance to frequency selective channel conditions such as fading. For example, when a part of the channel bandwidth fades, frequency interleaving ensures that the bit errors that would result from those subcarriers in the faded part of the bandwidth are spread out in the bit stream rather than being concentrated. Similarly, time interleaving ensures that bits that are originally close together in the bit stream are transmitted far apart in time, thus mitigating against severe fading as would happen when traveling at high speed. However, time interleaving is of little benefit in slowly fading channels, such as for stationary reception, and frequency interleaving offers little to no benefit for narrowband channels that suffer from flat fading where the whole channel bandwidth fades at the same time. The reason why interleaving is used on OFDM is to attempt to spread the errors out in the bit stream that is presented to the error correction decoder, because when such decoders are presented with a high concentration of errors the decoder is unable to correct all the bit errors, and a burst of uncorrected errors occurs. A similar design of audio data encoding makes compact disc CD playback robust. A classical type of error correction coding used with OFDM-based systems is convolutional coding, often concatenated with Reed-Solomon coding. Usually, additional interleaving on top of the time and frequency interleaving mentioned above in between the two layers of coding is implemented. The choice for Reed-Solomon coding as the outer error correction code is based on the observation that the Viterbi decoder used for inner convolutional decoding produces short error bursts when there is a high concentration of errors, and Reed-Solomon codes are inherently well suited to correcting bursts of errors. Newer systems, however, usually now adopt near-optimal types of error correction codes that use the turbo decoding principle, where the decoder iterates towards the desired solution. Examples of such error correction coding types include turbo codes and LDPC codes, which perform close to the Shannon limit for the additive white Gaussian noise channel. Some systems that have implemented these codes have concatenated them with either Reed Solomon, for example, on the MediaFlow system, or BCH codes on the DVB-S2 system to improve upon an error floor inherent to these codes at high signal-to-noise ratios.
Topic: Adaptive transmission. The resilience to severe channel conditions can be further enhanced if information about the channel is sent over a return channel. Based on this feedback information, adaptive modulation, channel coding and power allocation may be applied across all subcarriers, or individually to each subcarrier. In the latter case, if a particular range of frequencies suffers from interference or attenuation, the carriers within that range can be disabled or made to run slower by applying more robust modulation or error coding to those subcarriers. The term discrete multitone modulation DMT, denotes OFDM-based communication systems that adapt the transmission to the channel conditions individually for each subcarrier, by means of so-called bit loading. Examples are ADSL and VDSL. The upstream and downstream speeds can be varied by allocating either more or fewer carriers for each purpose. Some forms of rate adaptive DSL use this feature in real time, so that the bitrate is adapted to the co channel interference and bandwidth is allocated to whichever subscriber needs it most. OFDM extended with multiple access OFDM in its primary form is considered as a digital modulation technique, and not a multi-user channel access method, since it is used for transferring one bit stream over one communication channel using one sequence of OFDM symbols. However, OFDM can be combined with multiple access using time, frequency or coding separation of the users. In orthogonal frequency division multiple access OFDMA, frequency division multiple access is achieved by assigning different OFDM sub-channels to different users. OFDMA supports differentiated quality of service by assigning different number of sub-carriers to different users in a similar fashion as in CDMA, and thus complex packet scheduling or media access control schemes can be avoided. OFDMA is used in the mobility mode of the IEEE 802.16 wireless MAN standard, commonly referred to as WiMAX. The IEEE 802.20 mobile wireless MAN standard, commonly referred to as MBWA. The 3GPP Long Term Evolution LTE, fourth generation mobile broadband standard downlink. The radio interface was formerly named High Speed OFDM Packet Access HSOPA, now named Evolved UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access EUTRA. The now defunct Qualcomm 3GPP2 Ultra Mobile Broadband UMB project, intended as a successor of CDMA 2000, but replaced by LTE, OFDMA is also a candidate access method for the IEEE 802.22 Wireless Regional Area Networks WRAN. The project aims at designing the first cognitive radio-based standard operating in the VHF low UHF spectrum, TV spectrum. In multi-carrier code division multiple access MCCDMA, also known as OFDM CDMA, OFDM is combined with CDMA spread spectrum communication for coding separation of the users. Co-channel interference can be mitigated, meaning that manual fixed channel allocation FCA, frequency planning is simplified, or complex dynamic channel allocation DCA, schemes are avoided. Topic. Space diversity In OFDM-based wide-area broadcasting, receivers can benefit from receiving signals from several spatially dispersed transmitters simultaneously, since transmitters will only destructively interfere with each other on a limited number of sub-carriers, whereas in general they will actually reinforce coverage over a wide area. This is very beneficial in many countries, as it permits the operation of national single frequency networks SFN, where many transmitters send the same signal simultaneously over the same channel frequency. 
SFNs use the available spectrum more effectively than conventional multi-frequency broadcast networks MFN, where program content is replicated on different carrier frequencies. SFNs also result in a diversity gain in receivers situated midway between the transmitters. The coverage area is increased and the outage probability decreased in comparison to an MFN, due to increased received signal strength averaged over all subcarriers. Although the guard interval only contains redundant data, which means that it reduces the capacity, some OFDM-based systems, such as some of the broadcasting systems, deliberately use a long guard interval in order to allow the transmitters to be spaced farther apart in an SFN, and longer guard intervals allow larger SFN cell sizes. A rule of thumb for the maximum distance between transmitters in an SFN is equal to the distance a signal travels during the guard interval. For instance, a guard interval of 200 microseconds would allow transmitters to be spaced 60 km apart. A single frequency network is a form of transmitter macrodiversity. The concept can be further used in dynamic single frequency networks DSFN, where the SFN grouping is changed from timeslot to timeslot. OFDM may be combined with other forms of space diversity, for example antenna arrays and MIMO channels. This is done in the IEEE 802.11 wireless LAN standards. Linear transmitter power amplifier An OFDM signal exhibits a high peak to average power ratio PAPR, because the independent phases of the subcarriers mean that they will often combine constructively. Handling this high PAPR requires a high resolution digital to analog converter DAC, in the transmitter. A high-resolution analog-to-digital converter ADC, in the receiver. A linear signal chain Any non-linearity in the signal chain will cause intermodulation distortion that raises the noise floor, may cause inter-carrier interference, generates out-of-band spurious radiation The linearity requirement is demanding, especially for transmitter RF output circuitry where amplifiers are often designed to be nonlinear in order to minimize power consumption. In practical OFDM systems a small amount of peak clipping is allowed to limit the PAPR in a judicious trade-off against the above consequences. However, the transmitter output filter which is required to reduce out-of-band spurs to legal levels has the effect of restoring peak levels that were clipped, so clipping is not an effective way to reduce PAPR. Although the spectral efficiency of OFDM is attractive for both terrestrial and space communications, the high PAPR requirements have so far limited OFDM applications to terrestrial systems. The crest factor CF in dB for an OFDM system with n uncorrelated subcarriers is CF equals 10 log n plus CFC, where CFC is the crest factor in dB for each subcarrier. CFC is 3.01 decibels for the sine waves used for BPSK and QPSK modulation. For example, the DVB-T signal in 2K mode is composed of 1705 subcarriers that are each QPSK modulated, giving a crest factor of 35.32 dB. Many crest factor reduction techniques have been developed. The dynamic range required for an FM receiver is 120 dB while DAB only require about 90 dB. As a comparison, each extra bit per sample increases the dynamic range with 6 dB. Efficiency comparison between single carrier and multi-carrier The performance of any communication system can be measured in terms of its power efficiency and bandwidth efficiency. The power efficiency describes the ability of communication system to preserve bit error rate of the transmitted signal at low power levels. 
Bandwidth efficiency reflects how efficiently the allocated bandwidth is used and is defined as the throughput data rate per hertz in a given bandwidth. If the large number of subcarriers are used, the bandwidth efficiency of multicarrier systems such as OFDM with using optical fiber channel is defined as eta equals 2 r s b o f d m display style eta equals 2 c d o t f r a c r underscore s b underscore o f d m factor 2 is because of two polarization states in the fiber where r s display style r underscore s is the symbol rate in giga symbol per second gsps and b o f d m display style b underscore o f d m is the bandwidth of o f d m signal there is saving of bandwidth by using multicarrier modulation with orthogonal frequency division multiplexing so the bandwidth for multi-carrier system is less in comparison with single carrier system and hence bandwidth efficiency of multi-carrier system is larger than single carrier system. There is only one dBm increase in receiver power, but we get 76.7% improvement in bandwidth efficiency with using multi-carrier transmission technique. Idealized system model This section describes a simple idealized OFDM system model suitable for a time-invariant AWGN channel. Transmitter An OFDM carrier signal is the sum of a number of orthogonal sub-carriers, with baseband data on each sub-carrier being independently modulated commonly using some type of quadrature amplitude modulation or phase shift keying This composite baseband signal is typically used to modulate a main RF carrier S N is a serial stream of binary digits. By inverse multiplexing, these are first demultiplexed into n display style script style n parallel streams and each one mapped to a possibly complex symbol stream using some modulation constellation QAM, PSK, etc. Note that the constellations may be different, so some streams may carry a higher bit rate than others. An inverse FFT is computed on each set of symbols, giving a set of complex time domain samples. These samples are then quadrature mixed to passband in the standard way. The real and imaginary components are first converted to the analog domain using digital to analog converters DACs. The analog signals are then used to modulate cosine and sine waves at the carrier frequency. F C Display style script style f underscore c, respectively. These signals are then summed to give the transmission signal s t. Display style script style s t. Topic receiver. The receiver picks up the signal r. T display style script style R T, which is then quadrature mixed down to baseband using cosine and sine waves at the carrier frequency. This also creates signals centered on two F C display style script style two F underscore C. So low pass filters are used to reject these. The baseband signals are then sampled and digitized using analog to digital converters ADCs and a forward FFT is used to convert back to the frequency domain. This returns n 
display style script style n parallel streams each of which is converted to a binary stream using an appropriate symbol detector these streams are then recombined into a serial stream s caret n display style script style hat s n which is an estimate of the original binary stream at the transmitter Topic mathematical description if n display style script style n subcarriers are used and each subcarrier is modulated using m display style script style m alternative symbols the OFDM symbol alphabet consists of mn display style script style m caret n combined symbols the low pass equivalent OFDM signal is expressed as nu t equals k equals 0 n minus 1 x k e j 2 pi k t t 0 t t display style nu t equals sum underscore k equals 0 caret n 1 x underscore k e caret j 2 pi k t t quad 0 l e q t where x k display style script style x underscore k are the data symbols. N display style script style N is the number of subcarriers, and T display style script style T is the OFDM symbol time. The subcarrier spacing of one T display style script style frac one T makes them orthogonal over each symbol period. This property is expressed as one T zero T E J two Pi K one T T E J two Pi K two T T D T equals one T zero T E J two pi K two minus K one T T D T equals delta K one K two display style begin aligned and FRAC one T int underscore zero carrot T left E carrot J two pi K underscore one T T right carrot asterisk left E carrot J two pi K underscore two T T right D T equals N FRAC one T int underscore zero carrot T E carrot J two Pi K underscore two K underscore one T T D T equals Delta underscore K underscore one K underscore two end aligned where display style script style C D O T carrot asterisk denotes the complex conjugate operator and delta display style script style delta is the Kronecker delta. To avoid intersymbol interference in multipath fading channels, a guard interval of length TG display style script style T underscore mathrm G is inserted prior to the OFDM block. During this interval, a cyclic prefix is transmitted such that the signal in the interval minus TGT zero display style script style T underscore mathrm G leq T equals the signal in the interval T minus TG T T display style script style T T underscore mathrm G leq T. The OFDM signal with cyclic prefix is thus nu t equals k equals zero n minus one x k e j two pi k t t minus t g t t display style nu t equals sum underscore k equals zero caret n one x underscore k e caret j two pi k t t quad t underscore mathrm g l e q t the low pass signal above can be either real or complex valued. Real-valued low-pass equivalent signals are typically transmitted at baseband. Wireline applications such as DSL use this approach. For wireless applications, the low-pass signal is typically complex-valued, in which case the transmitted signal is up converted to a carrier frequency. F C display style script style F underscore C in general, the transmitted signal can be represented as S T equals 
new t e j 2 pi f c t equals k equals 0 n minus 1 x k cuz 2 pi f c plus k t t plus arg x k Display style begin aligned S T and equals re left new T E carrot J two Pi F underscore C T right and equals sum underscore K equals zero carrot N one X underscore K cos left two Pi F underscore C plus K T T plus arg X underscore K right end aligned Topic Usage OFDM is used in Digital Audio Broadcasting DAB, Digital Television DVB-T T2 Terrestrial, DVB-H Handheld, DMB-T-H, DVB-C2 Cable Wireless LAN IEEE 802.11A, IEEE 802.11 grams, IEEE 802.11N, IEEE 802.11AC, and IEEE 802.11 AD. WiMAX, LiFi, ADSL G.DMT slash E2 G.992. 1. The LTE and LTE Advanced 4G mobile phone standards Modern narrow and broadband power line communications OFDM system comparison table Key features of some common OFDM-based systems are presented in the following table. Topic ADSL OFDM is used in ADSL connections that follow the ANSI T1.413 and G.DMT ITU G992.1 standards, where it is called discrete multitone modulation (DMT). DSL achieves high-speed data connections on existing copper wires. OFDM is also used in the successor standards ADSL2, ADSL2+, VDSL, VDSL2, and GFAST. ADSL2 uses variable subcarrier modulation, ranging from BPSK to 32768 QAM in ADSL terminology this is referred to as bit loading, or bit per tone, 1 to 15 bits per subcarrier. Long copper wires suffer from attenuation at high frequencies. The fact that OFDM can cope with this frequency selective attenuation and with narrow band interference are the main reasons it is frequently used in applications such as ADSL modems. <laughs> Powerline technology OFDM is used by many powerline devices to extend digital connections through power wiring. Adaptive modulation is particularly important with such a noisy channel as electrical wiring. Some medium speed smart metering modems, Prime and G3, use OFDM at modest frequencies, 30 to 100 kHz with modest numbers of channels, several hundred in order to overcome the intersymbol interference in the power line environment. The IEEE 1901 standards include two incompatible physical layers that both use OFDM. The ITUTG.HN standard, which provides high-speed local area networking over existing home wiring power lines, phone lines and coaxial cables is based on a phi layer that specifies OFDM with adaptive modulation and a low-density parity check LDPC FEC code.
Topic: <laughs> Wireless Local Area Networks (LAN) and Metropolitan Area Networks (MAN). OFDM is extensively used in wireless LAN and MAN applications, including IEEE 802.11A program, N and WiMAX. IEEE 802.11A program, N, operating in the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, specifies per stream airside data rates ranging from 6 to 54 megabits per second. If both devices can use HT mode, Added with 802.11n, the top 20 MHz per stream rate is increased to 72.2 megabits per second, with the option of data rates between 13.5 and 150 megabits per second using a 40 MHz channel. Four different modulation schemes are used, BPSK, QPSK, 16QAM, and 64QAM, along with a set of error correcting rates 1 to 5 sixths. The multitude of choices allows the system to adapt the optimum data rate for the current signal conditions. Topic: <inaudible> Wireless Personal Area Networks (PAN). OFDM is also now being used in the Ymedia ECMA 368 standard for high-speed wireless personal area networks in the 3.1 to 10.6 GHz ultrawideband spectrum. See multiband OFDM. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Terrestrial digital radio and television broadcasting. Much of Europe and Asia has adopted OFDM for terrestrial broadcasting of digital television DVB-T, DVB-H and TDMB and radio Eureka 147 DAB, Digital Radio Mondial, HD Radio and TDMB. <laughs> DVB-T By directive of the European Commission, all television services transmitted to viewers in the European Community must use a transmission system that has been standardized by a recognized European standardization body, and such a standard has been developed and codified by the DVB project, Digital Video Broadcasting DVB, Framing Structure, Channel Coding and Modulation for Digital Terrestrial Television. Customarily referred to as DVB-T, the standard calls for the exclusive use of COFDM for modulation. DVB-T is now widely used in Europe and elsewhere for terrestrial digital TV. SDARS <inaudible> 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 The ground segments of the Digital Audio Radio Service SDARS systems used by XM Satellite Radio and Sirius Satellite Radio are transmitted using coded OFDM COFDM. The word, coded, comes from the use of forward error correction FEC. Topic. COFDM versus VSB The question of the relative technical merits of COFDM versus 8VSB for terrestrial digital television has been a subject of some controversy, especially between European and North American technologists and regulators. The United States has rejected several proposals to adopt the COFDM-based DVB-T system for its digital television services, and has instead opted for 8VSB vestigial sideband modulation operation. One of the major benefits provided by COFDM is in rendering radio broadcasts relatively immune to multipath distortion and signal fading due to atmospheric conditions or passing aircraft. Proponents of COFDM argue it resists multipath far better than 8VSB. Early 8VSB DTV digital television receivers often had difficulty receiving a signal. Also, COFDM allows single frequency networks, which is not possible with 8VSB. 
However, newer 8VSB receivers are far better at dealing with multipath, hence the difference in performance may diminish with advances in equalizer design. Topic: <laughs> Digital radio. COFDM is also used for other radio standards, for digital audio broadcasting DAB, the standard for digital audio broadcasting at VHF frequencies, for digital radio mondial DRM, the standard for digital broadcasting at shortwave and medium wave frequencies below 30 MHz and for DRM plus a more recently introduced standard for digital audio broadcasting at VHF frequencies, 30 to 174 MHz. The USA again uses an alternate standard, a proprietary system developed by Ibiquiti Dub HD Radio. However, it uses COFDM as the underlying broadcast technology to add digital audio to AM medium wave and FM broadcasts. Both Digital Radio Mondial and HD Radio are classified as in-band on-channel systems, unlike Eureka 147 DAB, Digital Audio Broadcasting which uses separate VHF or UHF frequency bands instead. <laughs> BSTOFDM used in ISDB The band segmented transmission orthogonal frequency division multiplexing BSTOFDM system proposed for Japan in the ISDBT, ISDBTSB, and ISDBC broadcasting systems improves upon COFDM by exploiting the fact that some OFDM carriers may be modulated differently from others within the same multiplex. Some forms of COFDM already offer this kind of hierarchical modulation, though BSTOFDM is intended to make it more flexible. The 6 MHz television channel may therefore be segmented, with different segments being modulated differently and used for different services. It is possible, for example, to send an audio service on a segment that includes a segment composed of a number of carriers, a data service on another segment and a television service on yet another segment—all within the same 6 MHz television channel. Furthermore, these may be modulated with different parameters so that, for example, the audio and data services could be optimized for mobile reception, while the television service is optimized for stationary reception in a high multipath environment. <laughs> Ultra wideband Ultra wideband UWB wireless personal area network technology may also use OFDM such as in multiband OFDM MBOFDM This UWB specification is advocated by the Ymedia Alliance formerly by both the multiband OFDM Alliance MBOA and the Ymedia Alliance but the two have now merged and is one of the competing UWB radio interfaces Topic. Flash OFDM Fast low latency access with seamless handoff orthogonal frequency division multiplexing Flash OFDM, also referred to as FOFDM, was based on OFDM and also specified higher protocol layers. It was developed by Flarion, and purchased by Qualcomm in January 2006. Flash OFDM was marketed as a packet-switched cellular bearer, to compete with GSM and 3G networks. As an example, 450 MHz frequency bands previously used by NMT450 and CNET C450 both 1G analog networks, now mostly decommissioned in Europe are being licensed to flash OFDM operators. In Finland, the license holder Digita began deployment of a nationwide at 450 wireless network in parts of the country since April 2007. It was purchased by Datamay in 2011. 
In February 2012 Datamay announced, they would upgrade the 450 MHz network to competing CDMA 2000 technology. Slovak Telecom in Slovakia offers flash OFDM connections with a maximum downstream speed of 5.3 megabits per second, and a maximum upstream speed of 1.8 megabits per second, with a coverage of over 70% of Slovak population. The Flash OFDM network was switched off in the majority of Slovakia on 30 September 2015. T-Mobile Germany used Flash OFDM to backhaul Wi-Fi hotspots on the Deutsche Bahn's ICE high-speed trains between 2005 and 2015, until switching over to UMTS and LTE. American wireless carrier Nextel Communications Field tested wireless broadband network technologies including Flash OFDM. FDM in 2005. Sprint purchased the carrier in 2006 and decided to deploy the mobile version of WiMAX, which is based on scalable orthogonal frequency division multiple access SOFDMA, technology. Citizens Telephone Cooperative launched a mobile broadband service based on Flash OFDM technology to subscribers in parts of Virginia in March 2006. The maximum speed available was 1.5 megabits per second. The service was discontinued on April 30, 2009. Topic Wavelet OFDM OFDM has become an interesting technique for powerline communications PLC. In this area of research, a wavelet transform is introduced to replace the DFT as the method of creating orthogonal frequencies. This is due to the advantages wavelets offer, which are particularly useful on noisy power lines. Instead of using an IDFT to create the sender signal, the wavelet OFDM uses a synthesis bank consisting of AN text style N band transmultiplexer followed by the transform function FN Z equals K equals 0 L minus 1 FN K Z minus K 0 N N display style F underscore N Z equals sum underscore k equals zero carrot l one f underscore n k z carrot k quad zero l e q n on the receiver side. An analysis bank is used to demodulate the signal again. This bank contains an inverse transform G N Z equals K equals zero L minus one gram N K Z minus K zero N N display style G underscore N Z equals sum underscore K equals zero carrot L one G underscore N K Z carrot K quad zero L E Q N followed by another N display style text style N band transmultiplexer. The relationship between both transform functions is F N K equals G N L minus one minus K Display style F underscore N K equals G underscore N L one K F N Z equals Z minus L minus one G N Z minus one Display style F underscore N Z equals Z carrot L one G underscore N asterisk Z one an example of WOFDM uses the perfect reconstruction cosine modulated filter bank PRCMFB and extended lapped transform ELT is used for the wavelet TF. Thus F N K display style text style F underscore N K and G N K Display style text style g underscore n k are given as f n k equals two p zero k cos pi n n plus one t 
two K minus L minus one two minus minus one N Pi four Display style f underscore n k equals two p underscore zero k cos left frac pi n n plus frac one two k frac l one two minus one caret n frac pi four right g n k equals two p zero K cos pi n n plus one two K minus L minus one two plus minus one N pi four Display style g underscore n k equals two p underscore zero k cos left frac pi n n plus frac one two k frac l one two plus minus one caret n frac pi four right p zero z equals k equals zero N minus one Z minus K Y K Z two N Display style p underscore zero z equals sum underscore k equals zero caret n one z caret k y underscore k z caret two n these two functions are their respective inverses, and can be used to modulate and demodulate a given input sequence. Just as in the case of DFT, the wavelet transform creates orthogonal waves with f 0 displaystyle text style f underscore 0 f 1 displaystyle text style f underscore 1 f N minus one display style text style f underscore n one. The orthogonality ensures that they do not interfere with each other and can be sent simultaneously at the receiver g zero display style text style g underscore zero g one. Display style text style g underscore one g n minus one display style text style g underscore n one are used to reconstruct the data sequence once more. Topic: Advantages over standard OFDM. WOFDM is an evolution of the standard OFDM, with certain advantages. Mainly, the sidelobe levels of WOFDM are lower. This results in less ICI, as well as greater robustness to narrowband interference. These two properties are especially useful in PLC, where most of the lines aren't shielded against M noise, which creates noisy channels and noise spikes. A comparison between the two modulation techniques also reveals that the complexity of both algorithms remains approximately the same. Topic history 1957, Kineplex, multi-carrier HF modem, RR. 
Mosier and R. G. Clava, 1966, Chong, Bell Labs, OFDM Paper and Patent 1971, Weinstein and Ebert Proposed Use of FFT and Guard Interval 1985, Cimini Described Use of OFDM for Mobile Communications 1985, Televit Trailblazer Modem Introduced a 512 Carrier Packet Ensemble Protocol 18432 Bit, S, 1987, Ballard and LaSalle COFDM for Digital Broadcasting 1988, in September THCSF LUR, first experimental digital TV link in OFDM, Paris Area 1989, OFDM International Patent Application PCT, FR 89-00546, filed in the name of Thomson CSF, Fouché, de Couasnon, Travert, Monier and all October 1990, THCSF LUR. First OFDM equipment field test, 34 megabits per second in an 8 megahertz channel. Experiments in Paris area, December 1990. THCSF LUR. First OFDM test bed comparison with VSB in Princeton, USA, September 1992. THCSF LUR. Second generation equipment field test, 70 megabits per second in an 8 megahertz channel. Twin polarizations. Wuppertal, Germany October 1992, THCSF LUR, second generation field test and test bed with BBC, near London, UK 1993, THCSF show in Montreux SW, 4 TV channel and 1 HD TV channel in a single 8 MHz channel 1993, Morris, experimental 150 megabits per second OFDM wireless LAN 1995, ET TSI Digital Audio Broadcasting Standard Eureka, first OFDM based standard 1997, ETSI DVBT Standard 1998, Magic Wand Project demonstrates OFDM modems for wireless LAN 1999, IEEE 802.11 A wireless LAN standard, Wi Fi 2000, proprietary fixed wireless access, VOFDM, Flash OFDM, etc. 2002, IEEE 802.11 grams standard for wireless LAN 2004, IEEE 802.16 standard for wireless MAN, WiMAX 2004, ETSI DVB-H standard 2004, candidate for IEEE 802.15, 3A standard for wireless PAN, MBOFDM 2004, candidate for IEEE 802.15, 2.11 N standard for next generation wireless LAN 2005, OFDM A is candidate for the 3 GPP long term evolution, LTE, Air Interface EUTRA downlink. 2007, the first complete LTE air interface implementation was demonstrated, including OFDM MIMO, SCFDM A, and multi user MIMO uplink. Topic. See also ATSC standards Carrier interferometry NOFDM Single carrier FDMA, SCFDMA Single carrier frequency domain equalization SCFDE